Thank you, Ananya, for joining us at the Money Control Creator Economy Summit. Um, you know, you heard out some of the creators in the previous session. Yes. Firstly, a big thank you uh, to Money Control for having me, and a big thank you uh, to all of you for being here. Great. Thank, thank you so much. Um, you know, what is your own sense when you look at the creator economy or the digital economy or whatever you want to call it today? Uh, we're seeing amazing momentum, individuals becoming brands. What do you make of it? I think it's amazing. I think, you know, it's giving so much opportunity. Um, on the music side of things, you know, we, I can put up anything at what I want at any time, and there's an audience for me. Um, it's giving people new jobs. Um, I think the, the most important part is as individuals, um, we need to learn how to just balance it out so that it doesn't start affecting our, uh, our well-being. Um, other than that, I think, um, you know, anything really powerful, so it could be something like um, social media, for example, right? It's, it's su such a powerful tool. Um, it could be really, really good, but then it could also be really, really harmful right. if not used correctly. So I think the potential is, is humongous, and we've seen it. Um, we have the, in India, we have the highest, uh, the youngest working population. Um, so it's a really exciting time for us. Um, there's a lot of talent in our country, and I think um, so many creators get such amazing platforms uh, because of all the various, uh, you know, platforms that there are. So it's, I think it's, it's great. Right. And, you know, Ananya, you've actually led me to my next question. You know, uh, Mario mentioned all the different roles that you play. Um, and, you know, all of them are so different from each other, right? Singer, songwriter, then you founded Swatantra when you were, what, 17 years, and that's in the affordable housing segment. You've also joined uh, the, the leadership of the Aditya Birla group, which, again, you know, is a very, very big role to have. So how do you sort of balance all of this? I'm sure there's a lot of context switching that you have to do every day. At 7 a.m., you could be working on a song. 10 a.m., you're working on your you know, piece of music. 12 p.m., you have a board meeting and so on. So how do you balance all of this out? And, you know, I mean, how does your music influence you in other parts of your life? Yeah. I think uh, I don't really have uh, a social life. I think <laughs> I'm just I'm either working on my music. You're on social media, but you don't have a social <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Um, on a serious note, I think, you know, the mornings and the nights are more for my music. That's when you feel creative. I think it's just, I've found a rhythm for myself. Uh, and then during the days when I'm usually at office, uh, or now Zoom teams, whatever it may be. Um, but early morning and late night, I'm usually in studio. Um, yeah, I think I'm still trying to figure out the best way to balance it all. Uh, every day is a new challenge. Every day looks a little bit different. And that's what keeps me going as well. I think uh, I'm someone who can get bored very easily. Um, so I like to challenge myself. Um, so yeah, but overall I would say, and then right in the middle of the day, usually I hit the gym. Wow. <laughs> what does a day in the life of Ananya Birla look like? So I wake up by six-ish. Um, I have my morning chai and smoothie. Um, after which I usually pick up my guitar and write a little bit. Um, um, then, you know, I do my skincare and all of that stuff, a little bit of meditation. I then go to office for my meetings, um, which range from, like you said, you know, Swatantra, so affordable housing, to global trading, to a couple of new brands that I'm starting now. Um, then I hit the gym. Then in the I, middle of the day. In the middle of the day, right in the middle of the day. Um, I eat a meal after that. Uh, then I do a couple of more meetings, and then I head back to studio in the evening. Uh, sometimes I meet a couple of friends, sometimes I'm just in studio, and then I just go to sleep. Wow. Um, how did you cope with the burden of expectations when you were growing up? Because, you know, the Birla name in India carries a sense of history, legacy, pride. And in many ways, you know, the story of India, uh, the story of Birla is the story of India, right? They've always been seen as nation builders. It's a huge uh, legacy to have. So how did you sort of cope with that? And did you consciously want to break that mold and, you know, stand out as something different beyond being a Sion of the Birla group? So I think, um, I think all the expectations are all and were all self-imposed. Hmm. At the end of the day, you know, no one 
my family has been very, very supportive. My friends have been very, very supportive. No one has made me feel that pressure. I have done it to myself. Um, so I think that's one thing that I would like to sort of convey is that it's all self-induced. And so in the same way, I think I'm 29 now. So I think, I think for me personally, age has taught me a lot. Life has taught me a lot. And now I've reached the stage where I really embrace my last name, I think uh, there's so much inspiration for me just in my bloodline. Um, and I want to make my family proud of me. Um, I see it less as a burden. I don't see it as a burden at all, actually. I see it less as a pressure and more as an inspiration. Um, but yeah, it took a while to reach here. You know, when I was in my early 20s, uh, I mean, the fact that I started a microfinance company at the age of 17 sort of just shows how much pressure I had put on myself to prove to myself that I was worth where I was born. Uh, there was a lot of guilt while growing up. Why am I born in this family, whereas uh, the girl uh, in front of me is on the streets, you know? So I couldn't really understand, um, I couldn't understand my privilege. I couldn't understand whether I deserve it. And so I was constantly trying to prove to myself that I am worthy hmm. of where I was born. Till about um, three years ago, I think, uh, so a lot of therapy. Was there a moment where you felt like you should stop taking that pressure? Because you mentioned that it was mostly self-induced. It wasn't something that your parents kept telling you about. I think, you know, when you continuously work on your skills and um, time and again you see uh, things happening in a way, um, you s automatically start feeling a little proud of yourself. Um, you start feeling like, okay, you know, I am, I am really trying my best. Um, and so over time, I think I became more comfortable in my skin. Uh, but it's really been a journey and it continues to be a journey. Um, uh, so I think it's just about doing what you love and doing it well. Um, and feeling that, um, that confidence from within. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. As soon as I start trying to search for external gratification, it all goes haywire. I really have to uh, hone in and find that love and respect for myself from within. Got it. And were you worried that you, know, you will not be taken seriously as a board member, as a business leader, if you're also you know, a pop star? Did, did that run through your mind? Did people advise you that you know, don't do this? So, Every single um, a and r in the music world that I met said, "Drop your last name. No one's going to listen to your music. Your music is actually they, they tell me this. Your music is actually really good, but people don't click on it because of your last name." And I'm like, "You know what? This is who I am. I am Ananya Birla. And if that means that I have two listeners and not hundred listeners, I'm okay with it because I and want now you people have what, 500 million streams or 600 million. I, I, I'm, I'm very grateful. I, I don't know actually. I don't know anymore. Um, I tend to not look into the numbers anymore. I just don't do it. And I'm much better for it. Um, but, uh, you know, many people have told me that. M most people, I would say, have told me that. Um, but I just continue to remain, you know, on not being taken seriously, I think work and performance speak for itself. Hmm. Um, Swatantra and the performance that we had, uh, the, you know, um, the acquisition of Chaitanya, uh, the interest from the peas, every, every, I think at the end of the day, numbers can't lie. Uh, people can look at our books. Uh, my founding team has stayed with me for the last 12 years, wow. um, which says a lot about, about them and the culture that we have. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, the truth comes out. At the end of the day, hard work speaks for itself. And uh, that's what I've always stuck to. I've always stuck to long-term growth over anything short-term. Right. Um, how did your parents influence you and in what ways? Uh, I mean, my parents mean everything to me, you know. I think, uh, uh, yeah, I, c I can't imagine a world where my parents don't exist. That's how attached I am to them. Maybe a bit too attached, but I'm, I'm very attached to my parents. Um, my, actually, my mom and my dad, they both are my best friends in, in very different ways. Uh, but we have a very, um, of course, there is a, there is a boundary, right, with every mm. parent. But at the end of the day, they know everything about me. I'm very honest with them about my good habits, my bad habits. They're very aware of what I'm doing, where I am. 
so um, yeah, I, I'm very, very grateful for my parents. And growing up, you know, who were some of the singers who inspired you the most, both India and globally? So I don't know whether any of you listen to Nirvana, but Kurt Cobain is someone who um, I really looked up to. I think... Uh, Smells like teen spirit. Yeah, I think, uh, or come as you are, right? I think this whole thing of authenticity is something that ha has really... Um, uh, so I want to actually answer something that you had asked before in link to this is this thing of do you, did you want to um, break away, right? And I, get, I used to get this a lot. And the truth is that I, I actually, it really, breaking away scares me. I don't want to break away from my family at all. I, I, that's the last thing I want to do. Um, but at the same time, I have to be who I am. And I want to be who I am as well. And if that looks different from the perception of some, that, that, that someone may have of a Birla girl, uh, I unfortunately can't do anything about it. Um, so I actually don't want to break away anywhere. I want to, it's, my family is my safe place. And that's where I want to be. Um, OK, coming back to, so, so exactly why I think um, Kurt Cobain, someone like Kurt Cobain, he's, um, he doesn't have an amazing voice. Uh, or he, he, you know, he's, he's just honest. And that's what, if you listen to him live, he will hit many bum notes, right? But it's not about the technicalities. It's about feeling that emotion. Hmm. And that's what I'm about as well as a songwriter and a singer. Of course, I'll do my riyas, you know. Of course, I will make sure that my voice is sounding uh, at a certain level. I'll do my vocal coaching. But with that extra one hour I will have, I will not work extra hard on, on perfecting my voice. I am okay to be imperfect. I'm okay to hit a couple of notes that are not in the key, right? But I want to make sure that I feel my music, that I actually feel what I'm singing. So I will focus more on the writing. I'll focus more on getting a melody that I feel like will connect with other people. I want to leave people feeling something. That's my, and that's why someone like a Kurt Cobain uh, really, you know, or Eminem, for example, right. he's just so honest with his rap. Um, and um, Rupi Kaur with her poetry. Um, I think honesty and authenticity is something that really um, speaks a lot to me. And so every artist that holds that, uh, I've worked with A.R. Sir quite a bit now, and you know, uh, he really inspires me as well with, with how he conducts himself. Uh, the fact that he takes feedback from someone like me who has no experience compared to him shows what legends are made of. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I have a lot to learn and a long way to go. And there are some amazing people around. Great. Um, and I know, you know, one of your hit singles, I think it was unstoppable. It carries a powerful message of empowerment. So how does this, again, resonate with your own journey um, and your approach to business and entrepreneurship? Empowerment. Um, I think, uh, I don't know whether I've spoken about this much, but uh, one of the reasons why I started Swatantra was I saw around me that women were not financially uh, self-sustainable. They were not financially empowered. And hence, society had uh, power over them. They couldn't make their own decisions because they were not financially self-sustainable. And so I wanted to go on this journey to empower uh, other, other women to make them self-sufficient, right? And that's what Swatantra is all about. Um, we're not helping them in any way, right? We're just, giving, we're just providing them a product that uh, a conventional bank doesn't provide them because they don't have any fin uh, they don't have any physical collateral to give us. So we work around social collateral, something called GLG. Um, so uh, I think uh, empowerment as as a concept um, is very empowering and can really really change lives. Uh, but like they say, you know, um, what is it? Oxygen mask first. You have, to, you have to wear it yourself first before you can help anyone else. Correct. And that's the sort of ethos that I have for my, my life as well. If I don't feel empowered, what am, what, I'm of no use to anybody. Um, and that can come across quite selfish. I used to think it's quite selfish initially. Um, but ever since I started practicing it, my life has really, really changed. Nice. One thing that you know, kept coming up through all the sessions this evening, I mean, I think the most frequently asked question was, you know, how does a creator go viral, or how do you create a hit? channel on YouTube or Instagram. 
and one word that kept coming up was authenticity. You know, how much of yourself you put there for people to relate to, to empathize with or cheer you on. So, you know, how do you relate to this in terms of authenticity and personal branding? How have you leveraged technology to connect with your listeners, with people who follow you on social media? Yeah. I, or are you wary of putting too much of yourself there? It really depends. I think, again, the most important thing is that we remain authentic to ourselves, right? Hmm. Um, and there's a fine line. How much of yourself do you actually want to share with the world? How much of yourself do you want to keep to yourself? Uh, being born in the Birla family, I think my life was, it's almost like my life was planned for me before I was even, <laughs> I, w I was even born. Um, every other girl in my family was married before the age of 22, and I'm 29. No one was involved in the family business. I'm on the boards. So it's, it's looked, it's very, it's looked, seemed very different for me. Um, so I'm, I'm very authentic on my social media, but by looking at my social media, are you going to get to know all of me? I don't think so. Um, I don't think too much about personal brand and stuff. I just, I, I don't, uh, there's nothing, you know, I just post what, I, what I'm feeling, and the people who connect with it, connect with it. And that's the sort of ethos that I have. I, I don't really, we don't really, because it can become like a, it can really like suck a, you in, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like, what do other people think? How am I coming across? It can really... How many likes, how many How many likes, how many comments? It can really, it can really take away from me focusing just on my work um, and the process of writing uh, or the decision-making process. Why am I making a certain decision? Um, so I, 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 try, I try to stay away from it because it can become really a very vicious cycle for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't get into it too much. Right. And then, you know, we're also talking at a time um, when we've seen Taylor Swift's uh, uh, era's tour take the world by storm. Amazing. Uh, Beyonce's renaissance tour. And I, I think I read some piece that spoke about how uh, Taylor Swift's concerts alone have contributed three some billion. three billion yeah. to uh, America's GDP. Do you see that taking off in a similar scale in India? Artists? 100%. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, we saw an Indian artist performing at Coachella, uh, which is uh, a, a big deal for us Indians. Yeah. Um, I see, I think, you know, music has always been a global language. Uh, what explains a song like Despacito going viral? I, I didn't know what the song meant till much later. I don't, I don't, how many of you in the audience even know what Despacito, Despacito, it's just a catchy song, right? What does it mean? So it's, Music is a, is, a, is, a, is a global language, yeah. and um, I don't think... K-pop, the rise of K-pop. I don't understand anything... I don't understand Korea. I don't understand the language. And yet um, BTS has such a huge... But BTS has such fan. a huge fan base, right? So I don't think it'll be very long before someone from India will also be at that global level, whether it's with English music, Hindi music, I don't know. It's just a matter of or maybe even Tamil and one of our regional languages. I, I don't know, right? But I'm, I'm quite sure that we will get there because uh, our sounds are so beautiful, our languages are so... Even Urdu, for example, it's just so poetic. Hmm. Um, it just, it's just a matter of right time, right place, and I'm sure someone will be up there. And, you know, is that something that you want to do as well, or multi-city tour? Is that, is that something that on the anvil, something that we can expect? So I went on tour earlier this year. Mm. I can't believe we're in November already. It's, it's <laughs> crazy. This year has flown by like crazy. Yeah. Um, is that something, you know, the idea of reaching out to more people, whether that's with my businesses, pro with the product, services, or with music, of course, it's something that is very, very attractive. Is that something that I focus on? I tend to not focus on. I, I like to, personally, I don't want to focus on the outcome because then I, I forget about enjoying the journey. Right. Uh, so, would I, is that something that would be amazing? Yes. Is that something that, you know, I'm focusing on right now? I'm just focusing on making good shit, right? I'm, I'm really just focusing on doing good stuff and making really good quality stuff. That's my focus. With the right people, in the right environment, for the right reasons. And then if something's meant to click, it'll click. If something's not meant to click, it won't click. At least I would have enjoyed myself. Got it. 
Um, you know, I think in the previous answer you spoke about, you know, how it's very easy to get sucked into this whole numbers game and impressions and likes and so on. Um, you know, how do you balance the pressures of being a celebrity, a very well-known star, um, with self-care and your own mental well-being? I mean, you also co-founded um, Empower, which, you know, is to improve mental health yeah. and awareness. So I've, I've personally had periods in my life where it's gotten very, very dark for me. It's gotten very dark. Uh, whether that looks like panic attacks, whether that looks like not being able to get out of bed, you know, it's gotten very dark for me. And uh, my takeaway from those experiences has been that there is nothing more important than your own health hmm. and your loved ones, right? Um, so that's why I don't, I just don't compromise on, I just, so for example, whether that's my working out in the, in the middle of the day, I don't compromise on that no matter what. So if that's a really, really important meeting, it, it can wait. But time for my loved ones and my own well-being is the first priority for me, which means that if I have to leave office at a particular time, that is just it. The meeting can come tomorrow. And everyone around me is super understanding. Um, so self-care for me looks like um, uh, physical health. And I, for myself, physical health and mental health is very is related, so I make sure that I, I remain fit to feel good. Uh, I meditate on a daily basis. Um, I make sure that I, I, I write. Um, it could be anything, right? It could be uh, like a journal entry. Right. Um, uh, also, uh, gratitude, gratitude journaling is really important. So it's scientifically proven that we are, when we are in a state of gratitude, we cannot be in a state of anger or a state of anxiousness. It's, it's, it's a very... Um, it's a very nice place to be. So I, I have small tricks <laughs> that I sort of use through the day uh, to keep me going. Um, it's really, really, really important for me personally to be functional uh, and to be to be a happy uh, to be a to be a happy person. Hmm. And by nature, are you a, c a careful person, a conservative person, someone who takes risks? How do you sort of evaluate things? No, I, I, I'm, a, I'm not a careful person at all. Um, so I think the fact that uh, I dropped out of Oxford, right? Yeah. To pursue, uh, because I was a universal music group, wanted to sign me on, um, and it just seemed like the right thing to do. Swatantra wouldn't have been where it is today if it wasn't for me dropping out of Oxford. Was it a hu huge risk? Of course, it's a huge risk. I mean, I worked my butt off to get into Oxford. It's like economics and management. I was uh, studious, like, I mean, I w it was crazy, right? And then I just dropped out. Um, so How I do tend to listen... at home when you dropped out of Oxford? Uh, they were very, it's, you know, my pa they were very supportive. I was, I was quite scared, actually, to tell them. Um, they were very supportive. They said, you know, as long as uh, you are happy with your decision. Uh, my mom said, uh, eventually maybe get a degree. I said, I will. Um, my dad said do what makes you happy, uh, you're building something that is very precious and that's what matters. Right. Um, it was very relaxed. It was very, I'm, I'm very grateful. I, I honestly was very scared, but not, I mean, it was fine. Risk taker, bye. Yeah. I am a risk taker. Uh, I think I, I tend to follow my heart way more hmm. than I should sometimes. Uh, but it's not let me down in the long run. I stand, I'm okay, I'm okay. Right. The last year has been, you know, very significant for you from um, a professional standpoint. Uh, apart from the singing, um, you mentioned the Chaitanya acquisition. That was a big one, buying out Sachin Bansal's uh, uh, venture. Um, and uh, you've also joined the boards of, you know, Aditya Birla Fashion and Grasim and so on. So what can we expect over the next year? How are you going to balance all of these different things that you do on a daily basis with that afternoon routine in the gym and the morning and evening singing and songwriting? Uh, so a lot of fun stuff is coming up. Uh, we're building a, diff a couple different consumer brands, so I'm really excited uh, oh, nice. for that. Um, I acted in a movie last year, it's OTT. Uh, Kunal Kohli directed with uh, Bobby Dale, so that should be out soon, hopefully as well. Oh wow, when um, is this coming out? I, I don't know. I'll have, I'll have, I'll have, you play a singer in that? 
Yeah, no, 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 I don't play a singer. My, my character's name is Jane. Um, it's like a Desi Sherlock Holmes. Okay. It was a great experience. Um, I learned a lot from my character. A lot of new music coming up. Um, so you know what, I, what I'm doing is, it can seem like I do a lot, but what, it's, what I follow is, if you, if you, if you imagine a T, hmm. uh, I try to be okay at everything, but then there's one line that goes really deep, right? So even right. in the businesses, the point of a team is that you don't have to be good at everything. As long as you understand everything, it's fine. That's a, my job as a leader. I, I, I bring on people on my team who are the best at, it could be finance, it could be whatever, right? Different, the, all the different departments. My personal strength, I would say, is more in terms of people management. It's more with uh, marketing, uh, more with um, positioning, design, um, consu understanding consumers, building product. That's sort of where my strength lies. Uh, and then I bring on people who are much, 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 much better than me hmm. to take on the other functions. So those are my strengths. As a songwriter, I, I, I bring on people who are much better than me when it comes to melodies. I, my forte is not even vocal production, it's more just writing. So in the th even though I, it seems like I do a lot, in the things I do, I'm very specific in what, what I'm good at. Got it. And then I just try to keep getting better at those things. And you delegate. And then I, yeah, and then you're supposed to get the right people to support you, right? It takes a village to build anything. Um, so whether you look at Swatantra, whether you look at the new, you know, every, the new stuff that I'm, that I'm coming up with, um, everyone in the room is always smarter than I am. And that's the point of having a team, is you bring on people who know it better than you do. And then, of course, I know where my strengths are. And then, you know, you strengthen your strengths and weaken your weaknesses. Um, so I just keep reminding myself, like, I'm a T. And that's how I sort of manage. Right. How do you see, you know, this trend evolving? Because content creators today influence so much of what Gen Zs do, right? The way they spend, the way they invest, what products they buy. Do you think that's going to be a defining trend going forward? Uh, influencers defining yeah, influencers defining buying decisions investment decisions I think everyone is becoming more um, aware of uh, products what's in the products um, so I don't I think that I think consumers are very intelligent I think uh, you know I'm building a sneaker brand right and I'm we've also built something called uh, Birla cosmetics and we're sort of working on that so Consumers are very, very intelligent. So if you say it's vegan, it better be vegan. Hmm. Um, so you can't fool anyone, which is really good. So at the end of the day, yes, of course, you know, if, I think, I think it's, if an influencer is um, honest and is putting a point across, at the end of the day, I think consumers can see through it. Um, so I don't think... So what I'm trying to say is that it really depends on what the point of view is and where it's coming from. But of course, you know, we'll all have people who we look up to, whether it's an influencer, whether it's our parents, and we will, you know, listen to them uh, in terms of when it comes to purchasing. But people have become really intelligent now, and I think it really boils down to our own desires and choices um, more than anything else. Got it. Um, I think we're out of time, so I'm going to quickly ask you a few rapid-fire questions. Oh, if God. that's yeah. okay with yeah. you. Um, your go-to music streaming app? Spotify. Favorite singer of all time? I think you answered that during the conversation, but... Favorite singer of all time? I think now it would be Arijit Singh, no? He's so good. Still? Arijit Singh? Arijit Singh. Yeah. Favorite song of all time? Uh, Blowing in the Wind, Bob Dylan. Top three tips that you would have for people who want to create content? Um, listen to your uh, why from within. This is one thing. Just don't take any advice from anyone. God. Make your own mistakes. Learn, learn yourself and you'll be fine. Um, Ananya Birla in one word. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> After talking to me, you tell me. I think I would say, I don't know, unconventional, risk taker, versatile. So many words come to mind. Maybe you we can ask the audience. How, I, I how do know. you see yourself? I don't know. It depends. I, I, I think uh, 
I don't know. Okay. One song that you'd like to sing for us. Teri meri kahani. I just sang it outside, so yeah, I know I'll, I'll do it. Okay, job. Teri meri kahani lagdi hai asmani ve tu palvi na ab mera hath chhadiye jina tere naal sik jawa teri hi galiyon mein mud jawa leke main tenu ud jawa kahi dur chaliye kahi dur chaliye kahi dur chaliye kahi dur chaliye Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you so much, Ananya. Thank, thank you, you thank you, Manik. Indeed, a beautiful rendition. And Chandra, thank you so much for that lovely.